This happened so damn fast. I guess you could say I was scared. I can't believe people would bring a pistol, a gun to a movie. Come on, come on, buddy, bring. And it's so hard and it's so unbearable. There's no justification for what happened in there. Yeah, as soon as I, as soon as I pulled the trigger, I said, oh, but this is stupid. Tonight, shocking new developments in that infamous Florida movie theater shooting. Just released documents claim the shooter, ex-cop Curtis Reeves, was actually texting his own son just minutes before he shot another moviegoer, complaining that that man was texting. <laughs> Is that the ultimate in hypocrisy? Does this clue uncover also the real motive for what cops say is a cold-blooded murder. Curtis Reeves is an ex-cop. He's an older guy. He's a senior citizen. He's accused of gunning down a young father and husband named Chad Olson because that dad had the misfortune of sitting right in front of this old man and had texted during previews. He wanted to find out if his daughter was okay. But this guy, 71-year-old Curtis, says, oh, uh, this guy scared me. I've never been so scared in my life. And that's why I pulled out my gun and fired a shot into his chest, killing him. The ex-cop says Chad became enraged after the cop said, hey, put your cell phone away in the movie theater. The shooter claims Chad then responded by screaming at him and hitting him in the face with something, possibly a cell phone. Here's what the shooter told cops right after he fired that deadly shot. It scared the hell out of me. Okay. I thought the guy was fixing to beat the out of me. He never told you that, right? The, the aggravated position, the, the contorted face, the cues and stuff like that. Uh, I don't think I've ever had anybody get in my face like that. I haven't been scared by that many people since I've been retired. Nobody has ever scared me. This guy scared me. And he's a cop, and he says he's so scared. This surveillance video shows the very moment the shot was fired in the movie theater. Does the ex-cop story match up to what we see on the videotape? We'll analyze that in a minute. But first, straight out to the lion's den. Now we're hearing the shooter, who was furious that the guy in front of him was texting, had texted his own son moments before the whole argument. My head is exploding, Philip Snyder, criminal defense attorney, from the sheer hypocrisy of it all. Why is everyone focusing on the texting part? The, what this case boils down to is whether this individual, Mr. Reeves, was in fear of great bodily harm as a result of this other individual that he says was threatening him, throwing popcorn at him, and punching him in the face. And I think a, a lot comes down to his character and the fact that he was a 20-year law enforcement mm -hmm. who, his wife said, has never pulled out a gun on anyone, I think is going to go a long way with the oh, jury please. to support Joey his Joey Jackson! The Save them the best the... for laughs. Go ahead, Joey, because my head is exploding with the hypocrisy. I'll say it again. You're complaining about somebody who's texting in front of you, but you've just finished texting yourself. It's previews. The movie hasn't even started yet. So you shoot the guy in front of you who just did what you just did? Do as I say, not what I do, and as I do. And the problem is, is that there's a significant disconnect between his outrage, your texting, the, the previews, this is a movie, between what he's believing is inappropriate and what he does himself. And that, of course, is not the only problem with the case. The additional problem is the disproportionate use of the force here. And in addition to that, Jane, you have the unreasonableness as to his conduct. In addition to that, you also have his story. We heard half of it, or we heard some of it that you said, uh, you know, we had right there. But he also said if he had to do it over again, he wouldn't do it. And then when they interviewed his wife separately, of course, she didn't see any threats. She didn't see any popcorn. This is an outrage. And, you know, he faces a minimum mandatory of 25 years based on his age, of course. That's life in jail.